Let's talk about the Cisco certification track. First and foremost, I've got to say, if you haven't watched the video on the benefits of Cisco certification, check that one out because a lot of what I'm going to say, I'm going to assume that you know the why you're doing this in the first place. Like, why is certification awesome and why would you want to move forward with it? What I want to talk about here is a little bit of the logistics of the Cisco certification program, which sounds boring, but it's really not. Uh, and then kind of, you know, talk about pay scales, talk about where you want to go, all, all of those things. I'm just going to kind of lump it together into uh, Cisco certification track. So the first, first and foremost, Cisco certification always starts with a CCENT and a CCNA. Um, it doesn't matter which direction you want to go, whether you want to be a security expert, a voice expert, and a lot of them I don't even have shown here, like a, a wireless expert. And I mean, there's many different fields that you can go into in the Cisco realm, but it always starts with the CCENT and CCNA. Matter of fact, if you check out this website down here, cisco.com forward slash certification, they will actually show every single track that they have. I'm only showing uh, right here the three most popular ones that people go after, which is routing and switching, security, and voice. So I'm going to break down each one of these on their own little slide. So I just want to give you right now the big picture. CCENT and CCNA is where it all begins. There's two ways that you can go about that. One is by taking two tests, uh, ICND1. Uh, that will give you a CCENT plus ICND2, and that will give you a CCNA down here. Or you can take the all-in-one CCNA exam, and that will give you, well, a CCNA. <laughs> People have asked me, well, do you get a CCENT2? Well, no, but you don't really care at that point. It's kind of like, you know, if, if you have a high school diploma, people don't go, whoa, 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 did you, did you do junior high? And you go, uh, uh, okay, you got me. I mean, they assume you know what you're doing at the lower level at that point uh, if you have a CCNA. So uh, again, more on, more on the CCNA and CCNT. I've got their own dedicated slides. What I want to talk about here uh, is who would use a CCENT and who would use a CCNA? And then, you know, what, what is the exam certification expiration policy? Explain all that. So first and foremost, I am convinced everybody would use a CCENT and CCNA. And, and I'm biased. I, I will fully admit that um, because everybody needs to know a little bit of networking. CCENT, first off, came out to really, I don't want to say compete with, but compete with the old net plus exam. Anyone uh, ever seen like A plus? I'm sure you've heard of A plus certification, net plus. It's all by a vendor called CompTIA, which is great. CompTIA is awesome. But net plus is a completely vendor neutral. The same thing with A plus, completely vendor neutral way of talking about, uh, for instance, networks. And it's very difficult because you, you kind of learn IP addressing, you learn cabling, but you, you say, well, what, what kind of cable management do you use? Well, here we don't talk about the specifics. Nobody wants to say, yeah, grab some Panduit cable management because that's a specific vendor or they might throw that as one of, of many. And nobody wants to talk about Cisco in Net Plus because that's specific. They just want to talk about, yeah, there's this router. Well, how do you set up the router? Well, yeah, you just do right? Because you can't talk about it in the Netflix. So, so CISO said, good grief, let's come out with CCENT, which gives you most of what Netplus without all the historical token ring, uh, deck net, you know, all those kind of things. And let's talk about real world, what you need. Uh, and then let's apply it to Cisco specific devices. Like here's how you set up a Cisco switch. Here's how you set up a, a, uh, a Cisco router. What I would say is if you want a CCENT and you just want to stop there, um, you are just looking at this point for a basic, broad overview of what networks are and how to work with them. Really, Cisco came out with the CCNT, as I mentioned, to compete with NetPlus. Not compete, uh, coincide with NetPlus. Um, but also to get into the Network Academy and to get into high schools. I mean, that's a lot of high school. Uh, high schools now offer a CCENT program. Uh, CCNA is what you really, really want for the business world, which, I mean, people, if you have a CCNA, people go, oh, okay, you know Cisco stuff. Like CCENT, even defining it when you say, well, I'm a Cisco certified. <laughs> What'd you say? <clears throat> um, in entry level uh, network technician. It's like it's like you don't even want to and, and I for, forgive the name, but you don't really want to say it because you're like, well, I'm just I'm just an entry level guy, and they go, oh, okay, so yeah, don't don't 
give him the keys yet. Uh, whereas the CCNA, they go, okay, he kind of has an idea of what he's doing. He, you know, he can he can work with Cisco devices, and and by far it is the most popular certification in Cisco to get is the CCNA. So people assume, hey, this this guy probably knows his stuff, or this gal knows her stuff um, in in the uh, the Cisco realm. And for the most part, as you do, CCNA really hits the tip of the iceberg on most Cisco technology. You get a little of security, a little of NAT, you get a little of of uh, routing, a little of switching. You know, again, it, it's just, a, I, you know, I kind of call them the peaks of the mountain. Like if you were to talk about all the lif different mountain, like routing and switching, CCNA just goes clip, 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 across the top. And that's really when you move down to the CCNP, uh, which I'm going to talk about in just a second, you just go down the mountain. You just fill in all the gaps that CCNA left uh, and, and really master a lot of the technologies. So who needs a CCNA? A lot of people. Uh, now, what is what is the and it, what, what I would say is a CCNA is a good on staff admin. I should finish my sentence, right? Not just a lot of people. Good on-staff admin to where they do Microsoft, they do Cisco, they do some other stuff because CCNA is not a full-time, like I'm dedicated Cisco. It's like, okay, I know Cisco, but I have other stuff to keep me busy because Cisco is famous for running for years and years and years without having to really touch it. So CCNA is good, but uh, not a dedicated, like I am a 100% Cisco job in, except in some, you know, kind of select cases. So uh, a lot of people want a CCNA and that's why it is the most popular. Now CCNP, um, oh, 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 I should mention, I, in, uh, I would say probably one of the more popular questions people ask me is, how much am I expected to make as a CCNA? And I just, you know, I, you know, when I, when I get that question, I go, uh, it depends, and I know you can answer any question that way. So, so I went to the uh, I went to the web, and I thought, well, well, let me just Google it and and bring it up. Look at this, uh, an IT network administrator or network engineer is look at that range, people. Thirty one thousand dollars to seventy two thousand dollars. Come on, I mean, I'm, I'm my my friend is a teacher. He's like, yeah, we make between. 30, and if we're, you know, we get our master's degree, we can get 40, um, and we're, you know, I, I feel, I feel very, very bad for teachers and, and government because they, it's, uh, yeah, so anyway, um, you know, it, you kind of really get a good idea, stop these pop-ups, so you get a really good idea of what people are geared at, but look at that rate, and I mean, a network engineer, that's by the way, Cisco right there, 42,000 to 87,000, what's the big deal, I mean, wh why the giant range in salary? It's all one word, and you know it, experience. It's, you know, how, how much experience do you have um, in the field? And, you know, some people say, well, can I just go at this with experience alone? Well, sure, you don't have to be certified uh, to get a job, but certification, in, and I'll refer you back to the, the, the previous video I did on uh, benefits of certification. Uh, th there's just a lot of huge advantages that you get with that. So, this is all experience. So if you're out of the gate, you know, CCNA, I just got it, uh, looking for my first job. I'm guessing you're in the 30s, you know, low low 30s. But the more experience you get, you're going to build up quickly because uh, Cisco is very, you know, it's a very risk-oriented, uh, scary job, but very in demand. So again, check out the benefits on, on that. So most people, as I mentioned on here, statistically move down to CCNP. Uh, why? Well, it's just the natural progression. Again, you get the clips of the... Uh, uh, mountains with CCNA and then CCNP is literally it's three exams and I'll talk about those on their own slide route switch and t-shoot they literally fill in the rest of these mountains here's the rest of routing rest of switching rest of troubleshooting um, and at this point when you have a CCNP okay you're looking for a job where you do nothing but Cisco that, that, you know maybe you dabble in some Microsoft oh yeah let me help add some users to group but my main job is doing Cisco I'm gonna set up the VPNs I'm gonna set up the the routing for this site I'm gonna work at an ISP again companies that are big enough or specialized enough that they would hire a, a Cisco certified peer person uh, that's that's the CCNP is not not most people do not go on uh, past the CCNA so these are people that now specialize in Cisco uh, so again bringing up the pay scales. CCNP, I would say if you go and just pass the exams, you're walking out saying, hey, can I can I get a job? I have a CCNP. People are going to look at you a lot more seriously than if you had a CCNA, but you can still expect to start probably, you know, low 40s, uh, maybe high 40s if you're lucky with zero experience. But again, 
as you get experience, it goes quick. I mean, really, it goes really quick in, in moving up the pay scale because uh, experience talks. When you can go in and say, yeah, uh, I've I've typed that command, and you know what? It was bad. That that actually ended my last job, you know, or something like that. I mean, you can come in with the stories that you know what you're doing. That's a CCNP. Uh, now, for those that, that uh, are brave, the few, the few and uh, far between, actually 2% is the statistic. 2% of anyone who's ever passed the Cisco exam goes on to attempt, not necessarily pass, the CCIE. Uh, CCIE is two exams. Uh, we'll break those down later on. Um, this is where, if you've got this, you are Cisco. I mean, you you live it, you breathe it, you have thrown your Microsoft hat aside. Maybe you still, you know, look at a Windows box every now and then, but it's just to set up a Radius server. You know, it's it's again, this is this is the the uh, extreme. Now, if you've got a CCIE, what can you expect to make? Well. Easily, it's the high end because you can't pass the CCIE without real world experience. Even if it's all in a lab, it's you know it's lab real world. It, I mean, CCIE is you're you're really putting your knowledge to the test in a lab environment. So uh, I would expect you know to start at the high end of the senior network engineer uh, with the CCIE. Uh, so those that's that's the general flow. Most you know most people will go this direction first unless they have a very specific reason for doing so. Now, does this direction? help you with the others? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So if you're thinking, well, I'd like to end up here, but I know I need a lot of routing and switching, I would absolutely say do this first. Things will just come to you much easier uh, in the security realm by having, uh, you know, at least not go all the way, but at least get a CCNP before you go attack the CCNP security. Now, can it be done? Can you get a CCNA and then branch out this direction? Yes, you can. It's just there's going to be some concepts, I guarantee it, where you're going, wow, that was really tough. Why did everybody else that I'm studying with just kind of get that? Well, they probably have a CCNP, so they've probably seen that concept before or something like that. Um, now, again, the flow is this way. You always go CCENT, CCNA, and then into the CCNA specialties. Um, so it's not like you go straight from CCNT to CCNA security and all that kind of stuff. Uh, now the specialties are fun. Um, I have a CCNP voice and a CCNP security. Um, I can tell you I love the voice side. It didn't used to, but I do now. Uh, again, the more you know about something, the more the more neat you think it is. And I think that's one of the big benefits of certification. I actually didn't talk about that on my benefit slide. The more you know about something, the cooler you think it is and the more inspired you are to go further. So when I first got into voice, I was thinking, ah, oh, this is this is lame. Oh look, the phone rang. Uh, wow, you know, but but once you really get it, you're like, okay, here's how SIP works. Okay, here's how RTP packets have to be prioritized above the other in quality of service. I mean, it's it gets really cool. So so again, looking at a base level, it's it uh, doesn't have too much gloss. But once you once you get it, I mean, you could say that for any of these. So anyhow, voice. This is your voice over IP world. Um, if you are looking for a career that is going to be everywhere very soon and you need a job go ccnp voice um, voice over ip is taking the world by storm and very little very few people i should say have expertise in it um, because most people go the security route honestly if you're looking for a specialty you know of course np is by far first and then people think well everybody needs security which is true but right now everybody's converting their network to voice over IP and they're hiring consultants to do it. So when consultants leave the premises, they're now stuck with a system they don't know how to manage. Hello, can we say let's hire a CCNP voice? Now CCIE voice, not going to be a day-to-day -day guy. This, these are the consultants, right? These are the people that work for the, um, the Cisco's, you know, actually employed by Cisco's or, or work for some of the other uh, consulting firms that come in and, and, uh, and set this up. So uh, CCIE voice, pretty awesome. C you know, security will never, ever, ever go away. Um, the reason I, I don't push people that way is because you got to be a special person to do security. Not saying like special as in, you know, you know, open the closet, bring that person out. But you really just got to, you had to have a paranoia about you. Um, I don't have that paranoia. I, I, I'm certified. I know it. I can do security and I do security. But, you know, I'm like, hey, man give me a hug. You know, like I, I don't think as I'm hugging him, he's pulling a knife out to stab me in the back, which is, that's what you have to be to be a good security guy. You have to, you have to really just, I, you know, I don't buy stuff online. People are there to steal my credit card. You know, that, that kind of mindset. Those are the security people. If you, if you are paranoid, dude, that's the way to go. 
So I've got so much more to say, but so little time. I'm going to record a nugget for each one of the major certifications so you can have a, a good idea of what those are about. But for now, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.